From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Friday the 2nd of September 2022. Good afternoon. Today we're going to be talking about the assassination attempt on Argentina's vice president. We'll also be discussing three of today's other important stories. But first, a failed assassination attempt in Argentina. Yesterday, an armed man tried to assassinate Argentina's vice president, Cristina Fernández de Kirchner. While the vice president and former Argentine president was greeting supporters outside her home, the attacker, reported to be a Brazilian national, aimed a handgun at Fernández de Kirchner at point-blank range. The gun, however, did not fire. The country's president, Alberto Fernandez, confirmed that the gun was loaded with five bullets, but that, for unknown reasons, it did not fire. The suspect has been taken into custody and is reported to be a Brazilian man in his mid-30s. He was in amongst a crowd of supporters of Miss Fernando de Kirchner, who were there to greet her as she returned home from court. President Fernandez said it's an event of unprecedented institutional and human gravity, adding the attack on Cristina Kirchner is the most serious since we have recovered our democracy. Miss Fernandez de Kirchner, who served as president for two terms between 2007 and 2015, is a divisive figure in Argentina. She faces accusations of corruption, which she denies, relating to her alleged favouring of a close allies construction firm for contracts during her presidential terms. Prosecutors have called for a 12-week sentence and a lifetime ban from politics if she is convicted. Fernandez de Kirchner says she's facing a judicial mediatic firing squad. However, as the Senate president, Ms. Fernandez de Kirchner enjoys parliamentary immunity. So, if convicted, she would not be imprisoned unless she loses her Senate seat at next year's elections or the Supreme Court ratifies the sentence. In response to the attempted assassination, the President of Argentina declared Friday to be a national holiday to allow people time to express themselves in defence of life, democracy and in solidarity with our Vice President. OK, so that's the biggest story of the day, but there's a lot more going on around the world. So, here's a rundown of three other stories. Poland's ruling Law and Justice Party, or PIS, will officially demand World War II reparations from Germany and estimate the losses caused by Germany at $1.3 trillion, the country's top politician has said. Jarosław Kaczynski, who leads PIS and is considered Poland's most powerful politician, said the figure had been reached using the most limited conservative method. He said Germany caused Poland serious losses and that we can't simply accept it and move on. Germany responded to the demand saying that the question of reparations has been concluded and added that Poland renounced further reparations a long time ago, in 1953, and has several times confirmed this renunciation. PIS has made numerous calls for reparations since coming into power in 2015 but has never officially demanded them. The right-wing party is hoping to win a third term in next year's election. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Last night, President Biden addressed the nation, warning that extreme Republicans are threatening US democracy. As such, he claimed that the upcoming midterm elections are a battle for the soul of the nation. The fact that this speech took place in Philadelphia, the birthplace of American democracy, is unlikely to be an accident. Clearly, Biden is trying out a new, more aggressive form of campaigning. He recently accused the Republican Party, at a separate event, of adopting a political ideology akin to semi-fascism. Perhaps this new aggressive line has been buoyed by the potential change in the Democrats' electoral fortune after the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade and the ongoing legal issues former President Trump faces, both for the January the 6th insurrection and for keeping hold of top-secret documents. It may feel like an age since Boris Johnson announced his resignation, with all of the hustings and debates and talk about economics. 
You may be glad to hear then that the Tory leadership race is finally coming to an end, with the Prime Minister set to head to Balmoral on Tuesday to offer his resignation, shortly before the new Prime Minister is invited to form a government by Her Majesty the Queen. Right now, Liz Truss is the favourite to take over. So much so that something truly disastrous must have happened polling-wise for Sunak to emerge as the leader. The winner, whoever she may be, will be announced on Monday and will take office on Tuesday and then on Wednesday will take part in the first Prime Minister's questions. A very busy first week indeed. We'll be doing a live stream on Monday running through the results as they come in. The link to the live stream is in the description below. Finally, one more bonus short story today, as we're going to be off air probably for next week and potentially the week after due to staff absences. The Parliament of Liechtenstein was shaken by earthquakes yesterday during a parliamentary debate over mandatory earthquake insurance. In diesem Zusammenhang dann auch die Frage. The session was temporarily halted and the building evacuated. Fortunately, no injuries or property damage has been reported. That's all we have time for on YouTube today, but if you want to see our test live stream of our Prime Minister's Question series this afternoon, you can get the link in the description on the Nebula version of today's video and on Patreon. Nebula subscribers not only get everything you've already watched ad-free, but also an extended edition of the show every single day, available to watch on Nebula or stream on your podcast app of choice. So if you want to support the channel and get a more extensive daily briefing every day, you'll want to sign up. And there's good news. Our friends at CuriosityStream, the streaming service which offers some of the best documentaries, is offering a deal whereby you can get both platforms, CuriosityStream and Nebula, for less than $15 a year. That's all the best documentaries you could want on CuriosityStream and then more TLDR on Nebula, including the extended briefing, other full exclusive TLDR videos, and it's always ad-free. Click the link below to get both services for less than $15 a year and support the channel.